If you want to learn how to build an amazing greenhouse without any cuts, keep on watching. Let it start. In our last video, we built this perfectly level 10 by 12 foot floor system. But what goes on to this amazing structure? Well, it all starts with what was here originally, which was a greenhouse. This is the original greenhouse that was at this location, but was completely demolished with ease just due to the fact that it was so old. And we not only wanted a larger greenhouse for functionality, but we also wanted something to match the style of the house adjacent to it. And that's where Homestead Supplier comes into play because they produce extremely high quality greenhouses that come as a kit. This is their Easy Fit Greenhouse Shed Kit. It comes in multiple sizes and the nice thing about this system is that it comes on two simple little pallets. Well, they might not be little, but they're very well organized and very easy to get into the backyard as long as you have a helping hand. The majority of these wall assemblies are four feet wide and all of them are six foot six inches tall. Therefore, they actually have quite a bit of heft and weight to them. So having a helping hand at this point is extremely valuable, I assure you. Now, one of the great things about this system is the fact that all these panels come fully assembled and therefore all we have to do is put it together. Now, each one of them is actually numbered so we know exactly the order that this system needs to be placed and all the framing, the siding, the windows in so we don't have to worry about any of that, which saves a tremendous amount of time and energy when it comes to insulation. So let's grab our first panel and position it correctly. The installation process is actually quite straightforward. It's just a matter of getting it properly secured in the right location. I want to make sure that the panel that has the number one and two are the first ones that I install and the number one is right on the very edge. Once I like the positioning, I then secure it down with the provided three inch long screws. You do want to make sure you're drilling into the floor joist below. So make sure you're taking measurements and marking them accordingly before you start fastening. In order to guarantee that we have true levelness on this wall, as well as some support, I actually add a support brace on the side of the wall. I also fasten down a block in our floor system and then secure our brace to that. All of our panels have a lip lap siding and they actually protect that lip during shipping with this type of product. Now it's just small pieces of siding that they cut down and stapled in place, which is why it's very easy to remove once you have it installed. In order to provide our first wall with a bit more stability, I do grab the last panel, which is very easy to figure out because it's the one with the highest numbers at the bottom and secure that to the adjacent wall. Once I fasten both walls together, I then secure the base plate to the floor joist, which provides an extremely stable and durable wall corner. With that in place, I then move on to the opposite side of the first wall that we installed. Before I bring up any other walls, I do go around the perimeter and actually mark out where each wall system should end, along with the numbers that should be correlated with that panel. That way I can guarantee that this system is being installed in the proper order. This is also a perfect time to note exactly where those floor joists lay so we know we're drilling straight into them. Once our next panel is resting on our floor system, I remove the lip guard with ease and then slide it into place. I give the base plate a few love taps along the way and then secure it to our floor joists. With the fact that each one of these panels is labeled so clearly makes the installation process extremely easy when trying to figure out which panel is going next. As you're installing your panels, you may come across one or two that need a helping hand to just get a little bit closer prior to fastening, which is why a helpful clamp like this is all you need to properly secure it and then take the clamp off and we're good. Depending on the size of your greenhouse, your layout structure might be slightly different than mine, but mine is a 10 by 12 and I have these small sections that go on the back corner. As we've installed these panels, the easiest way to do it is really just to watch out for that bottom lip because the bottom lip of our siding is actually lower than our base plate because it's there to cover up our floor joists and our floor sheathing. And as you're installing, you wanna double check 
level on every single panel. And that's always a good feeling when you see both directions come in perfectly level. This portion of the project really was extremely satisfying because there was so much hard work and energy getting our floor system perfectly level and square, but since we did all the hard work ahead of time, the installation process for these walls was extremely quick and easy. As we proceed to install the final couple panels, the last one of course is going to be our door. Now the door actually fit perfectly as in the correct size for the opening. However, we had to actually swing it into place because of how the siding had to overlap each other and therefore I had to do a slight cut and a couple love taps on the outside. Okay, maybe these were a bit more forceful love taps, but guess what? It fit and we're level. So that was the small piece I had to cut off right there just to swing this angle in, which is why it was so tight. But because it's so tight, it is extremely perfect and ready to be fastened in. With our entire wall structure fully assembled and secured to our floor joists, we are now ready to move on to our top cap. Now these 2x4s are noted as TP for top plate, and with my framing nailer I easily secure them to the top of our wall structure. This is the beauty of this greenhouse kit because every single one of these boards is labeled as TP and I didn't have to cut a single one. They all come pre-cut like everything else, which of course means faster installation in the long run. Now that we have those accounted for, we can move on to our soffit panels. Now these panels actually lay flat against our top plate because this is gonna be our soffit for our roof line. I do line up each panel so it's flush against the inside of our two by fours and nail them accordingly with our two inch long nails that come with our kit. Once this first panel is nailed down, you then align the lap and lip panel with the adjacent one. Now this is a really easy way to actually go about nailing each one of these together. And since each panel is four feet wide and our structure is 12 feet wide, each side gets three panels. Now comes time for our roof rafters, but the first thing to do before we install them is to actually space them out accordingly. Each one has to be spaced out 24 inches, and the best way I find to correlate that measurement to the top vertical surface is to just take my speed square and transfer that measurement up to the very top. Once all the roof rafter locations are marked, it's time for our roof rafters. And again, with these, they're already pre-cut and pre-assembled, except for the middle bracket that connects both pieces together. Prior to nailing this bracket to the frame structure, you do want to guarantee that you have the right angle needed, which is pretty easy to do. Just make sure that those 2x4s don't move on you as you're nailing it in place. Each roof rafter structure gets two plates like this, one on both sides, and each side gets 12 nails, which means that we have 24 nails holding each one of these structures together. Once fully assembled, lay it on top of our soffits and align it with the inside edge of our soffit. Once proper positioning is placed, I secure it with three two inch long screws on each side. These screws will keep our rafters stable, but it certainly won't be very structural until we get further framing taken care of that is gonna connect all these roof rafters together. As I noted earlier, each one of these roof rafters is placed every 24 inches. And that's actually very important because it comes into play with our framing. Now this framing is also pre-cut to the exact lengths needed, and there is multiple lengths associated with this structure. The first row needs to be in perfect alignment with the very end of our roof rafters and once we're happy with the positioning, I use our 2 inch long screws to secure it in place. Our kit comes with triangular wall panels that connect into this framework which is actually extremely easy to account for because there's notches already built into it so you know exactly where your framing needs to go. You do need to double check for levelness to guarantee that these panels are actually correctly positioned. But once correctly positioned with our first panel, I then install our second panel and screw them together. Once I had the front panels fully installed, I then went to the back side and installed those as well. Keep in mind that these panels are also a bit heavy, so you do want to have a second helping hand if possible. 
Once I had both the back and front taken care of, I could then continue with my framing structure all the way up. And remember that there are multiple sizes for staggering all these pieces of wood, and they're already pre-cut, so just make sure you're following the correct staggered pattern that comes with your installation kit. At this point in time, I wanted to say a huge and special thank you to the sponsor of this week's video, Homestead Supplier. Now they have an amazing array of options to choose from, from greenhouses to sheds, dog kennels, saunas, and so forth. I'm so extremely impressed with the quality of this greenhouse that BYT is proud to stand behind this product and this brand. And if you wanna check their products out for yourself, then please check out the link in the description box below. Now that our framing is taken care of, we can finally move on to some trim. More specifically, our roof line face trim. Now this again comes at the exact lengths needed in order to avoid any cutting along the way. I recommend clamping it down first and actually aligning it at the very bottom and then securing it as needed with a few nails. A nice tool to have when doing this is a palm nailer because you can get into some unique tight knit angles and you can avoid being on a tall ladder trying to swing a hammer above your head. After I take care of the fascia on the front side, I then proceed to the back side getting that fully installed and moving my way actually inside and installing the last couple of support brackets for our triangular wall panels. Now we use the same type of nailing pattern as we did previously on our roof rafters and once we got those installed, we can finally move on to cutting. Yep, I know I said there was no cutting involved, but there was a slight cut needed in this specific side fascia because they came a little bit longer than needed. I still personally think that it's extremely impressive that we got this far with this amazing structure with no cuts along the way, but I wanted to be completely open and honest and note that there were a few minor cuts needed at the end. Once our fascia boards are installed, I can finally move on to our metal flashing. Now this is a drip edge flashing that goes up against our fascia board, but also against the 2x4 structural support that we installed previously. I'm using our two inch long nails that came with the kit to secure these pieces of flashing in place. And by running the piece of flashing underneath the piece that I installed previously will hopefully prevent any water penetration here as well as avoid any cuts needed for our flashing. We can now finally move on to our roof panels. Now these panels are a clear polycarbonate roof panel, which is actually a very standard panel for a structure like this. Before fastening your panels down, you do want to apply a foam gasket on your drip edge that does match the contours of your roof panel. And this is also included in your kit, but just make sure you're installing this one at the very bottom. And then there's another one that goes at the very top after we have all of our panels fully installed. There's a large hump groove at the end of each panel and that actually needs to overlap one from panel to panel. That will guarantee that we don't have any drips along the way and they have a specific fastener that is designed for this type of structure, which has a specific gasket built into the system so it prevents any leaks between penetrations. This is actually a perfect type of roof structure to use for a greenhouse because not only does it prevent any moisture to get into your structure, but it also allows light to come through the roof. And that's what you really want, even though that this building has a copious amounts of windows installed, you still want to get as much light into the structure as humanly possible. The walls at the corners come together extremely well, but there still is a gap there. Luckily, with this kit, it comes with made-to-fit trim at every single corner location. There is a tall side and a short side on every single corner, so keep that in mind. But as long as you know that ahead of time, you can easily install this with a finish nailer in a few moments. Before painting, I would caulk the seam where each piece of trim meets each other, but as long as that's taken care of, I'd say we're extremely well sealed at every single corner location. I am really enjoying how this roof system turned out. All those gaskets are perfectly aligned and in place. I still need to put in our side flashing right up against our fascia. However, before we do that, I figured that since we need to do that, we might as well paint first. But instead of showing you painting the whole thing, how about we just do this? Perfect, done deal. 
It really does make life a lot easier in the long run if you paint your fascia boards first before you apply your metal flashing because I find it a lot easier when you're trying to roll it on versus a paintbrush and delicately getting underneath your drip edge. I'm using the same specialty fasteners that have a gasket on it that I did previously with the roof panels. I apply a fastener at every single 2x4 location and then at the front of our drip edge I screw both ends down properly and then apply a few secondary fasteners every 24 to 26 inches across. As far as alignment goes, the most important thing is the very tip top alignment. I'm actually making sure that the very top edge of this flashing is aligned perfectly with the very top point of our eave. As you can see up close and personal here but there's still a seam right there that I need to take care of, which is why I'm using a membrane flashing at the very top to make sure that there's no possible chance of any moisture getting through at this location either. Our final piece of trim on this roof system is this top cap, which is nicely placed right on top, and it comes with specific screws that are a bit longer than the ones that we did previously. This accounts for the more sizable gap that we see at this location, but just know that it's the same type of screw, just longer. I installed both side top caps first and then proceeded to install the very center top cap. Now, whenever working on a roof, make sure you're very diligent about ladder placement and make sure it's on stable ground prior to getting up onto the roof because it always seems to be a little bit easier to get up than down and having a properly stable ladder makes life much more comfortable coming down. But while I still have the ladder positioned properly, I might as well install a roof fence. Now this goes on the top of both the back and front side of a greenhouse. With this installed, we proceed to going inside the greenhouse and the one part of framing that we haven't done are these cross braces. Now these cross braces are connected at every single roof rafter and this is because this unit is such a large unit. Some of the smaller units don't require this, but on the larger ones like this 10 by 12 unit, you wanna have some type of cross dimensional bracing. With a clamp and my frame nailer, I'm easily able to install each one within a few moments and I can move on to shelving. Now this unit also comes with its own shelving system, which is just two by fours that also come with specialty grates to fit the space. I align this framing right underneath our window sill, and that's because I still want full access to our windows because each one of these windows does open up to a nice cross flow breeze because it's not even summer anymore and it was already getting hot within the space. Perfect for a greenhouse, I'd say. Each shelf consists of two pieces that are 113 inches long and the side smaller pieces are 21 inches long. The plastic grate systems are actually extremely easy to cut and I just take my multi-tool to cut down the sections needed. And the really nice thing about this pattern is that you can cut basically at any point and the shelf itself is still very structurally sound because of this honeycomb or should I say rectangular pattern within each shelf. And with any greenhouse, it should come with a door handle. Now this is probably the most simplistic door handle you can get, which is still extremely durable and functional. All you need to do is place the rod through the hole, secure the handle with two screws, then proceed to the backside and install this bracket on the very end of our rod. This can actually be twisted up or down when you leave so you can actually lock it or just close the door. And with our door handle finally installed, guess what? We are done. I truly love how this entire greenhouse turned out, so much so that I wish this was in my own backyard. And yes, Homestead Supplier did provide this entire unit at no cost to us, but I have to say that I've seen a lot of kits and this is by far the highest quality kit system I've ever assembled. As I noted earlier, each one of these windows is fully functional and can be opened and closed at any time. And if you can remember what we had before this to what we have now is truly remarkable and is one beautiful, sexy beast of a greenhouse. Oh yeah.